and you can hear more from them and many other incredible speakers, speakers rather, on our Autotech stage, which is running all day today on stage four. Now, from mobility to entertainment, our next speaker has, has been one of the creative godfathers at the studio behind iconic TV shows like Rick and Morty, Samurai Jack, Harvey, Birdman, Attorney at Law, and Adventure Time, Cartoon Network, Adult Swim, and Boomerang's content delivers high quality entertainment to people all around the world on TV screens, mobile screens, and anything in between. Here to speak with Super Awesome's Dylan Collins, put your hands together for the Chief Marketing Officer of Cartoon Network, Adult Swim and Boomerang, Michael O'Lean. There's no table. Oh, where are we going to put our... <laughs> oh, no, OK. Someone have a table? We might have been told. No. Um, Hi. Michael, welcome. Dylan, thank you. Um, Michael, I've got to say, you are without doubt the most interesting CMO I think I've ever known or met. Right? And the, the reason for this, for those of you who don't know uh, Michael's background, is that um, he is one of the originators um, and one of the influences behind Adult Swim. Yeah. You have been a co-writer on many amazing things. Yeah. Um, Harvey Birdman. Yeah. You were involved in Ben 10. I oversaw development and greenlit it, technically. Yeah. Okay. I was reluctant to at first, but it and, turned and, out to be good. Okay. <laughs> you, you, were, you were adjacent yeah. to it. You, you, yeah. were, you were there. No, no, and, yeah. and fundamentally, you have been involved in many of the, the IPs and characters that I think have shaped probably a lot of people in the audience's childhood. Yeah. And I, I think maybe let's take a look at some of those, and then we can kind of talk about oh, the sure. narrative. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's a real... If you don't know Cartoon Network and Adult Swim, there's a real, because... It, you have to have a reel. Yeah, I think I think this will look. I think <laughs> yeah. this will look really good. Yeah. Okay, can we can we roll the ro roll the reel? I call this one the hole in July. Spice it up, Spice Man. This is not Wisconsin. What can I say? I'm cool, Rick. Oh, yeah! Three, two, one. It's time for the main attraction. There you go. So, okay, my first question, is that what the inside of your brain looks like? Yeah, that's, that's basically from 9 to 11 any <laughs> given day, yeah. No, and, that's, that's exactly my life. Yeah. It's so weird to see it flash before you like and, that. And how does that, I mean, explain the inside of your brain? How do all these things connect? Because Cartoon Network, Adult Swim, very different things and entities. They are. It's funny because I think of them as highly related um, and sort of, the, and why I, why I went to work at Cartoon Network is pretty much that, which is I felt like this was, I joined it four years after it started. And already it was doing really strange, unexpected things. And I was like, wow, this is really resonant and relevant. And I want to work, I want to put energy against that thing, the right. entity, Cartoon Network. Right. Um, and so to me, it totally makes sense. And it's about kind of, creating stuff that people can use in their life as a shared conversation starter or a thing to like wear as a badge and be like, I love this thing. And you alluded to like maybe people out here grew up watching some of this stuff. The amazing thing now is working at the network and a young person comes to work there and they grew up watching the stuff. It's super emotional. 
hmm. for us and rewarding. And it's like your family, your home. Like, thanks for watching it. Come back and you work here now. Right, it's right. super amazing and rewarding. And do, do you find that it's, I mean, when you think about sort of the, the different audience cohorts for yeah. Adult Swim today and Cartoon Network today, yeah. like, it, it, is it harder to create content for an Adult Swim audience or for a cartoon audience? Uh, it, oh, that's interesting. It's, I think it's harder for kids. I think it's harder to create content that re is resonant with kids. And Cartoon Network always aspires to make shows that work on a couple levels at the same time. So if you right. look at even Powerpuff Girls, Dexter's Lab, Adventure Time, Steven Universe, we like to make shows that are worlds and that kids, it's aimed for kids, but also is kids plus and broadens out. Right. And that's a very tricky, hard thing to do well. And the shows that work, like Adventure Time or whatever, when they work, they really work. And they, they travel beyond TV into all kinds of things outside in the real world. It also is a little bit easier because you're really only, you know, aiming at one demographic. Right. And, but, you know, both the guiding principles of development for both those networks are for Mike Lazar, who runs Adult Swim, Rob Sorcher, uh, who runs the studio for Cartoon Network, and then Christina Miller, who's over both them, is, have we seen this before? Is this new? Hmm. Is this fresh? All right. And, and is the person running the show talented enough and, you know, sort of competent enough to run a 250-person endeavor for five years? But, but, I mean, just even thinking about the, the kids' piece of that for cartoon, I mean, you know, kids these days are getting, you know, content and entertainment yeah. from so many different places, and it feels like it's getting, it's becoming shorter and shorter in its format. It, it, is, yeah. is, it, does, does that change how you think about it? it? Yeah. Um, we had the benefit of, at Cartoon Network of starting with seven-minute cartoons, Tom and Jerry, right. right? So we've always been, and, and then our originals are 11 mm. minutes. Adult Swim started with 11-minute shows. So we've always been kind of shorter format. Um, and I think everyone's consuming all varieties of format, right? Um, you know, a four-hour superhero movie still works in that context. And eh, just and, and, <laughs> made some money. And then, then you have TikTok, right? And, and kids and young adults are watching it all. It just depends on time of day and what their mood is and where they are and mm. how much of an internet connection they have. I will say, though, that humor, we are uh, very smart people in my marketing team are tracking humor for kids. And we are seeing TikTok kind of change what's in vogue humor-wise. Hmm. We're just coming out of the Adventure Time and Steven Universe world where humor and emotion, like big-heartedness, have gone together, which as a Gen Xer is and, weird to me. Right, because <laughs> and also, like, big-heartedness is not how you would describe the internet in general. Right? No, right, but, that's, but those, those shows resonate because they're warm right. and empathetic. And now we're starting to see the TikTokness of it all, or I guess Vine, RIP, of just like quick eggs that are not as emotionally based. So, seems uh, so, to be emerging. And that's almost going back to that sort of Tom and Jerry kind of slapstick yeah, totally. era. Is that fair to say? Totally, yeah. Luckily, animation's perfect for that, you right, know? Right, And I want to talk um, a little bit about history, because I, I think yeah. that often, you know, we know the names and we know the brands, but we don't understand or realize what happened behind it. So Adult Swim yeah. came out of Cartoon Network. Yeah. Right? That, I mean, for, for even back then, I mean, Cartoon Network was operating in a pretty big organization, yes. relatively. That seems like a radical thing. Can you, can you talk about yeah. how that happened? And also, and this is important, tell us things that have never been told before. Okay, I, I can do that. Um, so, okay, the first thing to know about both Cartoon Network and Adult Swim is that it's in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, which is not what you think of when you think of media capital. Right. Um, you think of LA and New York, right? Um, so people like me would emigrate there. Anyone who worked there came there like a moth to a flame because we loved what was going on there, right? right? And there was a certain amount of like really strange thinkers that are from Georgia, right? And that all of a sudden have this massive network and they're just kind of playing with it. And I would say, this might be regionalistic, but they came at it with a different attitude and also a very Ted Turner-y attitude of like, right. we're just gonna do this. Huh, and was that writers, was that animators? It's everybody, it's right. everybody. So it's from, and, and they were just given this library by Ted who like over leveraged basically and yeah. bought all this stuff and then was like, we're gonna do a 24 hour cartoon network. Don't make originals because I just spent all this money. So just use, you know, Huck Hound and Augie Doggy right. and stuff. And the programming department was pretty bored 
and so Mike Lazo, Kaki Jones, uh, Andy Merrill, they would start to take old stuff and edit it in different ways and make the characters say new things. And when I came to work on creative and marketing, that was my job too, is to make the characters relevant again. So we'd have to write new stuff for them. And the extreme of that was Space Goes Coast to Coast, which is a talk right. show. Um, they took CNN interview with, I think it was Denzel Washington, and intercut it with a Space Ghost cartoon as a pilot, like tape to tape, kind of right. like your DJ career. <laughs> And, uh, and that was a proof that. of concept. So they just, no one told them to stop. And so they just kept doing that. And that right. became a show. And we would look at the numbers every day and go, a third of our audience at any given time of day is adult, um, even during Scooby-Doo or whatever. They're adult. Right. Like Mike Lazo said, we're leaving money on the table. And our ad salespeople said, we can't sell it unless it's its own block. Hmm. So then we said, OK, cool, we'll right. make it a block. Hmm. And I had, my partner Eric and I had Harvey Birdman and a couple other ideas sitting around and had been hearing no for like three or four years because there was nowhere to put it. Right. Right? So we pitched this block and we were in a Four Seasons in Atlanta with the head of Turner Entertainment. We pitched this block impassionedly. I have no memory of what our pitch was other than <laughs> please let us do this. And he was like, I don't know, we have Bonanza. Why don't we just do what Nick at Night does and put Bonanza on at night? And our argument was, no, we need to make a talking wad of meat. Uh, <laughs> that seems to us to make more sense than Bonanza. And he said, kind of, and I made fun of him, I just saw him on a plane a couple weeks ago, and I was like, you were so imperious when you said this. You were like, fine, I give you a year. So he gave us one year huh. from that day to name it, brand it, and have shows. And, and, get, and get it out on broadcast? And, or and get it out, no, get it out on broadcast. Wow. So it, maybe you know, but like we snuck them out on December 20th at night, the pilots, like Harvey Birdman, Sea Lab, right. couple uh, Aqua Teen, and the Brack Show, so that we could write it down in accounting that it aired the year we made it and <laughs> pay for it then. So there are stealth airings, and we the secret no one knows is that Mike Lazar, who runs it and is the you know creative visionary for it to this day, hates the name Adult Swim. Really hates it. <laughs> Or at least he pretends to hate it. Uh, what, what, for a reason, or just it, it strikes it as very Mike, core? Mike, uh, his superpower is contrarianness. And right. so, um, but we came up with four names, all of which were designed to say, kids, get away. Like, right. kids, huh. no, don't look the other way. It's horrible. Um, so Adult Swim in the US is like when you're at a pool, and the kids have to get out of the pool. And that literally was the packaging, get out of the pool now. Other names were like Aviso. <laughs> Aviso. Which is warning. Okay. Uh, so it sounds it, like an insurance company. I maybe. know. <laughs> yeah. A nutritional supplement, a visa, with the power of jellyfish. Um, <laughs> yeah. So anyway, he hates the name. That's one thing no one knows uh, about but, it. But, but, but I mean, just in telling this story, it, it sounds like if, if YouTube had been sort of around or viable or something like that then, you would have almost started on something like that? Because it's a very sort of remixy DIY kind of culture that you're Yeah, describing. I know. There, I know. There was. And even the black and white cards we used you know, from maybe four years into Adult Swim, just white type on, right. on cards to communicate to the audience, it's tweeting yeah, ahead right. of tweeting. But yeah, that remix culture, that was the entire charge of Cartoon Network was remix these characters because yeah. these characters are not relevant now. So it is very internet feeling. It is. And, I mean, it's, it, you know, you now exist sort of within, um, let's, let's call it a giant company. Yeah. In, in terms of Warner Media. one of the world's biggest AT &T. companies. Yeah. I mean, do you think that, you know, creating something like Adult Swim is now possible I in know. these days of mega media companies? Or does it ha that have to be a startup to do that? Uh, I think, I think why at and bought us is because we are crazy and innovative. Um, and they seem to like, uh, they seem to ascribe to the same principles we do in terms of like freedom and creativity and all that. Right. Um, the, and I think as long as we remain in Atlanta to some degree, that really helps us. Hmm. Because it's not, we don't do things the normal way. We don't have to call agents. And I mean, we do, but we don't swim in those waters of the normal processes. Right. Um, so I think that that inoculates us to a certain extent. Um, and. Yeah, and, and all the executives, at and feels very similar to me in terms of personality as former Turner, which is sort of like, there's not a lot of um, ego, and it's sort of direct, right. and it's sort of like, what are you doing? Right. Move faster, right. go, what are you up to? And, and sort but, of, but, the, but the thing is that, uh, 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 sorry, like, 
what a part of the genius of Mike Lazar and Adult Swim is don't spend a lot of money and therefore you can do whatever you want. Hmm. And so the question is, can we get that to a scale where a giant company would be like, oh, that's worth continuing, you know? Right. So it's not just the innovation, it's scale. Interesting. So we took our time with scaling Adult Swim. But, but, but you got there. And then somewhere along the way, it clearly all went wrong and you became CMO. Uh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's but, weird. But, but you have, the mo as I said at the beginning, you have one of the most unusual backgrounds for a CMO. I mean, yeah. how, how, is, how does that make your perspective different? So yeah, just to describe my job. So uh, um, yeah, I'm a creative. I came up through copywriting or whatever, and then I made a show. And, and I've always been kind of around illustration and drawing and animation. And I, when I meet with young people, they want to replicate my career because they're mm -hmm. like, oh, I want to make a thing like Harvey Birdman, or I want to be in marketing. And I, I invariably have to say to them, don't. This is not how you would run this. This makes zero sense. Right. Um, the organizing principle for me is I came to work and protect and grow this thing, Cartoon Network, because mm. I believed in it as a mission. I was like, that's an amazing, it's the Galapagos Islands of, of creativity, <laughs> and I'm going to make sure no oil tanker hits it, basically. Right. So I've, had, I've always had a day job there where I'm kind of an adult and changing diapers and stuff around the office. And then the, the Harvey Birdman of it is always on the side. It's at night. It's a hobby which is also so, not so how to run a show. You know, There's no way to do it. So wait, so, but, but do you feel that you're now sort of a, a CMO um, masquerading as a writer or a writer masquerading as a CMO? Oh my God, I literally went to therapy for like three years about this. I'm so sorry to bring that all no, up No, I really did. And my wife is totally effing sick of this. Like, just... <laughs> and at this point, because I'm a certain age, it's not about me at all. And it's about... Every, it's, in, it's kind of trying to make everyone else have the opportunities I've had. I struggled with it for a long time, like, what am I doing? Am I selling out? Who am I really? Am I a closeted show creator who's just addicted to a day job? And at some point in your life, you just are like, you know what? I'm just lucky. I was, I've been given so much, and I'm just totally lucky. What's cool about it is when I meet with a show creator who's it's their first show, and our hmm. show creators are, tend to be pretty young, um, hopefully I come with some validity and some empathy to them, and I'm like, I'm going to take care of you. It's fine. I'm going to mm. help launch your show. We'll get it out there. I've been doing this since Dexter's Lab and Powerpuff right. Girls. Right. Like, we got your back. You're going to disagree with us on some stuff. But generally, on, on that trust point, me. And we've got about 20 seconds left. Oh, my God. So I'll ask, I'll ask for your brevity in the answer. But for people who are thinking about creating shows or yeah. they're hacking things together, yeah. I mean, in 2019, what advice do you give them? Yeah. Don't think about the platform, where it's going. Think about your characters only. Right. And make it. Make it, and you got to put your character. You can't write your characters. You've got to put them. You got to make them walk and talk before you even know who they are, and and they'll tell you who they are. But you got to make them move and walk and talk. Excellent. That's what you got to do. Brilliant. Okay. Perfect. I think we are done. Yeah. Well, please thanks. give it up Bye. for Michael. Wow. Thanks, Dylan. Wow, that was insanely <laughs> fast. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, man. Good.